for your spiritual kickoff this week, we have a special verse. It's a Acts 11.24. And that verse, what it says here, For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. And we're going to unpack that verse. So it's right here after Easter. The Easter egg hunts are done, right? Hopefully you got all those baskets. You got them picked up at your yard. Everything, all the kids had some fun. You're probably sick of ham. We all have the Easter ham, right? Things like that. And the Cadbury bunny. Those the eggs, do they give anybody else heartburn or is it just me? I kid, but I tell you what, you know, Easter is such a fun time of year. I love the colors, love the celebrations. Church is always usually packed on Easter Sunday because what we celebrate here, and what are we celebrating? We're celebrating the risen Savior. That's it. As men who believe that the tomb is empty, every Sunday should be Resurrection Sunday. Every Sunday. You know, Acts eleven twenty four. that's a powerful verse. And we should strive for that in our lives, guys. We really should. That should be the model. We should be going after that. So let's unpack this verse. Let's see what it's telling. What is it telling us? So what it's really talking about here, the person that it's referring to is Barnabas. Okay. Now Barnabas, if you actually look in, in, and look up what Barnabas stands for, what, like what it what it symbolizes, it's it's for son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. And Luke described him as one who consoles and encourages. That sounds like a great guy that I want to be around. Do you want to be known as an encourager or someone who, who just talks down to people, right? So let's, talk, let's look at four things around Barnabas to, that we need to remember about him because it really helped me as I was studying this and trying to think through how to bring an impactful spiritual kickoff to you guys this week. My, my study Bible had four areas, and I thought it, it just really hit home. And the first was that he convinced the apostles of the genuineness, the genuineness of Paul's conversion. So if you look in 9... Verse 27, it says, But Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles, speaking about Paul, and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and he had talked to him, and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Right there. He stood up. He leaned in. And he just took control to stand up for his friend, because he knew that his conversion was genuine. You know, he also, number two, he represented the apostles at Antioch, and recognize that the movement there was the work of God. Just another way that he's just stepping in and he's doing God's work, right? Just, just an, another piece of encouragement. Then he and Paul were sent by the Spirit on the first missionary journey. So if we go and we look at in Acts 13, verse 2, I just pulled this out here for you guys because I think it's important looking at God's Word when you're trying to really understand it. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have called them. So there you go. The Spirit's calling him. And you know what? The son of encouragement, when he gets that call, he acts. And finally, my, my study Bible, when I was preparing for this, it said he defended the work among Gentiles at the Jerusalem Council. So if you have to go to chapter 15 of Acts, and if you look at verse 12, I thought that was an impactful verse I want to share with you guys. All the people kept silent, and they were listening to Barnabas and Paul as they were relating what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. So you know what? People, they like being around encouraging people, right? And they like listening to Barnabas because he was always uplifting. He was always speaking truth. And this verse says he was a good man. All right, so let's break that down. That doesn't say great. That doesn't say righteous or self-centered, but a good man. And the goodness here is humble focused on serving others. That's what I want you to remember from this verse. And then it also says, full of the Holy Spirit. So he was full of the Holy Spirit, which meant there was no room for Satan to do his work because he was full of the Spirit. And that's the way, you know, if you're, if you're always worshiping, if you're always relying on God, Satan can't do his work because, you know, where worship is, worry can't live there. So worship the Lord, be full of the Holy Spirit. And then it said at the very end, he added to the Lord. And that is the goal, right? That is the great commission in action. He added to the Lord. And that is our goal. You know, are you encouraging other people? Are you encouraging your coworkers, your spouse, your kids? You know, if this hits hard, if it's hard for you to answer that question, it's okay. I'm not not pointing fingers. But this is something we need to consider. Because if we're going to lead our families and be the spiritual leaders that that they really need us to be, they need you to be encouraging. 
You need to be lifting them up. You're not, not tearing them down. Okay, and that's got to be part of our daily walk. And that's my prayer for you guys, is that as lions, that we are, are chasing that Acts 11.24 version and that, that, that Barnabas had, we're chasing that every day. You know, and some days we'll do better than others, but we're constantly chasing that. Because you know what, guys? It's so worth it. It is so worth it. So I hope, you know, that verse where he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord, that should be your encouragement for this week. And, and so th- take that verse, write it on a notepad, put it on your truck, put it on your car, keep it, put it in your bathroom window, in your mirror, constantly. Just let that soak in this week, okay? Because that is a verse that's going to make a big impact in your life. And I really hope that you take that to heart. Now, what you can expect this week, I got a surprise. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the surprise is, but I got a surprise, and you're going to have to wait for us. You're going to have to come back Wednesday because this is the, probably the biggest guest that we've had on the line within us. This man is full of truth, and he's full of the Spirit, and he's going to lift you up. He's going to challenge your thinking. So I encourage you to come back on Wednesday because, you know, no spoiler alert, but get ready. Have your notebook ready. This is going to be a fun, entertaining episode I know you will get value from as you tr- strive to be the leader you're predestined to be. Now, the question I want you to think about this week, remember, we're coming off Easter. You know, we're, we're out here. Everybody's in spring mode. That's great. If the tomb is empty and it is finished, why do you live your life as if it's not and that it isn't? Think about that. If the tomb is empty and it is finished, you know, Jesus said it is finished. Why do you live your life that, like it isn't and that it's not empty? Think about that, guys. That should really hit home. That's just something that I want you to ponder, to think about. And if that makes you squirm a little bit, you're in the right place. We're here to serve you. We're here to help you. So think about that, Acts eleven twenty four. 24. Now, I don't know Easter's over, but every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help guide you. Go to the line within us. And check us out, the main webpage, thelinewithin.us, and you'll find the resources for the Bible study. We're giving it away. We want want to serve you. We're going to give it to you. There's ways that you can get that right there on the main page. You know, and share this. Share this spiritual kickoff with someone else. Send a text message. Send an email. Whatever you need to do. Send something on Instagram. Connect with us. And share this out. And then go... Hook up with us on, the, on our social media platforms. We're out there because we know your feed is full of junk. We want to put some, some positivity into your feed to give you some encouragement throughout the day. That's what it's about. I definitely don't make posts because I love sitting there making posts. I'm trying to make posts that serve you guys in your walk. And that's my prayer. So guys, check us out. Give us a, a rating. Write a review. All that stuff makes a big impact. Go to the line within.us for all our resources. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. It's, it's, it's Easter. It's the week after Easter. I know we're all excited. Let's get out there. Let, let's share the gospel. Let's share the good news. And let's be the Acts 1124 men that we should be. So guys, go out. Have a great day. And unleash the lion within. At The Lion Within Us, we discuss wealth a lot. And our sponsor at Investing for Beginners provides great resources for those wanting to take their knowledge of investing to the next level. Their monthly research e-letter is the best way to learn about the market and apply insight to begin growing your wealth. The newsletter tracks the founder's journey of managing a portfolio and shares how the decisions are made. For the beginning investor, this could be a great way to learn how to get started with investing from a company that is putting their money where their mouth is. I've been subscribing to their e-letter for quite some time, and it's something I look forward to every month, and I've learned a ton. They're a conservative group with an emphasis on a margin of safety. The Lion Within Us listeners can receive 15% off the monthly e-letter by visiting thelionwithin.us slash IFB, that's investing for beginners, and using the promo code LION at checkout. That's thelionwithin.us slash IFB and use promo code LION to receive 15% off your monthly research e-letter. 